driving while intoxicated. It became an all too familiar routine for Audra Johnston. And I can remember just holding on to the steering wheel going, man, there's got to be more to life than this. She received her first DWI at age 21. With nothing more than a slap on the wrist, Johnston continued her drunk driving ways. Up until my third DWI, I really did not care. And I think unless you're an alcoholic, you're not going to understand it. After her third offense, Johnston was given the option to participate in an ignition interlock program. This is where a company authorized by the state installs a breath analyzer device that looks somewhat like a cell phone into a person's vehicle to test their blood alcohol content before they drive. Life Safer State Director Bill Chastain demonstrates the breath test. Once it goes to blow, you can go ahead and take the test. Okay. Chastain says there's a certain way you must blow into the device for it to record the proper blood alcohol content level, making it difficult for just anyone to do it. It has a hum tone that's built into it, so it's not as easy as just having somebody just jump in and, and take the test. Um, they have to know kind of how to take the test properly. Once you blow into the unit, it will emit a green pass light, letting you know it's okay to start your car. If it detects a small trace of alcohol, a yellow warning signal appears. If your BAC exceeds the state's legal limit, a red fail light comes on. This means your vehicle will not be able to start. All of the breath tests and other pertinent information are recorded. The participant must bring in their vehicle every month to transfer the information from the ignition interlock device to a computer. That data download is sent to the state's Motor Vehicle Administration for review. MVA Deputy Administrator Chrissy Neiser says if they find any violations, and there's a long list of them, they'll extend the program by a month for each violation. So it's to try to teach them that, look, this is, we have to change your behavior to make you a safe driver again and try to get you down the right path. Maryland has the highest participation per capita on the East Coast in the Ignition Interlock Program with close to 10,000 people. Every state has some type of Ignition Interlock requirement, and some states, like New York, make it mandatory for first-time offenders. While these in-car breathalyzers are a great technological tool in the fight against drunk drivers, Neiser warns they're not a cure-all. The recidivism rate while they're on the ignition interlock device is good because obviously they have to comply with the program in order to be able to start the vehicle and continue to drive it. What happens after that, you know, is, is, is uh, always a difficult part in terms of really changing that behavior. I hated it. The interlock was the pain in the butt that I had. You know, it was the money. It was the inconvenience of going and every month. Johnston tried every trick in the book to avoid blowing into the device. Once off the program, she received her fourth DWI at age 39 and spent 17 days in jail. It was a wake-up call for her destructive behavior. I had to hit my bottom before I finally said, okay, I'm done. This time around, Johnston gladly participated in the Ignition Interlock program. She's been sober now for four years and believes the high-tech DUI deterrent saved her life and the lives of others. I'm thankful for it now. You know, I'm, I used to badmouth it back in the day, but I'm very thankful for it, and I think it's a great idea.